Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to church on such a beautiful Mother's Day Sunday. We're so glad you're here and at home, wherever you may be, listening, watching, experiencing. We're going to start right now with our opening chant, One with the One. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, come on, come on, wake up. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. We are so glad that you are here, whether you are joining us live or live streaming us. Oh, I guess you're all live. Okay. <laughs> I really hope so. Anyway, we are so glad that you are here. Um, if you're in the room, just remember we do wear our masks because we want to keep you alive. Thank you very much. And if you're at home, you can take those off. So anyway, let's go ahead and, oh, and by the way, turn off your cell phones if you would, silence them. Let's go ahead and set the intention for today's service, shall we? All right, so I invite you to just simply turn within, recognizing that there is just that one infinite power and presence, that loving creator which we call God, it is both source and substance, creator and created, and I recognize that we are not just part of it, that we participate with it, that we are God's celebration of itself, himself, herself, and this day, together, we know that we are united in that intention for love, for wholeness, for creativity, and for fire. For we truly have moved into this realm of willingness and receptivity to grow, to love, and to rise up in the awareness of our own divine natures and how wonderful that is. So I know that this service today is a divine idea. It is a fabulous, magnificent idea, and that the truth, the high truth, is being revealed so clearly and powerfully and wonderfully through Dr. Mark and that we are receptive, we are willing, and that the band and the music, all of this is working together to serve as ah, a healing balm and it embraces us, it wraps us, and it loves us. I know the technology in this is so fabulous and we bless it, we embrace it, and we allow it to be part of our Ah, the, the spiritual technology that guides us in this life. So with all of this, I know that together we are the celebration of God. We are the celebration of life and love and all is well. So with gratitude, I released my word into spiritual law. I know it is so, and so it is, and together we say, Amen. You are the face of God I hold you in my heart 
you are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in. Would you please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and leave us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So stay standing. We're going to sing our congregational song now. It's in every one of us. Here we go. It's in So we're going to join together now in collective silent meditation. I invite you to simply use the mantra of God's the love I am and allow yourself to just be where your body is. This will just be a simple five minute silent time to commune and to listen. And I will bring us out in five minutes.
attention to the priest and he would read the holy word and consecrate the holy bread everyone would kneel and bow today the only difference is everything is holy now everything 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 is holy now Sunday school they taught us all about the time Moses split the sea in two and Jesus made the water wine I remember feeling sad miracles don't happen still but now I can't keep track because everything's a miracle you know everything Everything, everything's a miracle. Yeah. And wine from water is not so small, but an even bigger magic trick is that anything is here at all. And so the challenging thing becomes. To look for miracles, but finding where there isn't one. When holy water was rare at best, barely wet my fingertips, and now I gotta hold my breath like I'm swimming in a sea of it. It used to be a world half there, heaven's second rate hand me down. I walk it with a reverend air Cause everything is holy now Questioning child's face Say it's not a testament That'd be very hard to say And see Another new morning come Say it's not a sacrament I tell you that it can't be done This morning outside Stood, saw a little red winged bird shining like a burning bush and singing like a scripture verse. It made me want to bow my head. I remember when church let out. Oh, it's changed since then. Everything is holy now. It used to be a world house. Heaven's second rate hand me down. Now I walk it with a reverent air. Cause everything is holy now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, well, good morning. Well, it's Mother's Day, and so if you are a mom or you put mothering energy into the world, that could mean you're a grandma, an aunt, the lady next door. It does not matter. You might be the babysitter. But if you put that wonderful mothering energy into the world, we want you to stand up. If you're at home, you should stand up, too, because we want to acknowledge you and love you. So thank you. And we... Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Mother's Day. Um, it was Ann Jarvis of Philadelphia who originated Mother's Day on May 12, 1907. 
And within five years, it was observed in all states. And President Woodrow Wilson made it a national holiday in 1914. So today, we want to take a few minutes and honor mothers and those who were mothering in our lives. And I realize for many of us, that may or may not have been our actual birth mother, uh, that, but, but it may include our birth mother and grandmothers and aunts and aunties. Uh, uh, I'm thinking about my sister. Um, many of my mom's friends were also my mom uh, because I grew up in a very small town. And that meant that anybody could yell at you or smack you on the bottom <laughs> if you were doing something you weren't supposed to do. And I have lived to tell the tale because they did, and I did. Um, teachers we had growing up, you know, lots of people have r that really, really important input. Now, maybe, maybe you might be one of those people who your mother was just like June Cleaver on Leave it to Beaver. You know, every day you came home from school, and there she was in a big fluffy dress and high heels, twirling around with a cake on a pedestal, right? That, that may have been your mother. You know, maybe your mother was more like Harriet Nelson from the Ozzie and Harriet show, you know, always deferring to Ozzie with sensible, sensible advice. Or maybe not. I'll just tell you an aside. Uh, the first house I rented here in Los Angeles used to belong to Ozzie and Harriet. Just a little bit of Hollywood trivia there for you. And I know that was true because I continued to get their mail years and years and years later. Uh, not, not the good stuff, but just the junk stuff kept coming through. So I think for, for most people, um, well, let, just let me say this. Whatever your mother was, if she was June Cleaver or not, um, remembering everyone that June Cleaver, that was an actress, right? That was an, they were acting. That was not real, OK? <laughs> Um, whatever she was, though, she was the vessel through which you chose to incarnate into this existence. So I think for everyone, our mother is our first spiritual teacher because she's teaching us about life and about love, right? And so mine certainly was for me. I remember as a very young child, I can remember my mother teaching me to pray and making sure I said my prayers at night before I went to bed. And you know, that very simple act is actually something that has stayed with me my entire life. It's like, wow, I'm so glad she got me to do that. That was like one area I did not have to fight to cultivate discipline. I already had it, you know. Now, as I get older, I think there was a lot of learning um, and teaching that went both ways over what I, uh, it was what I think of as our ironing board time. So at night after dinner, my mother would often iron. Uh, I hate to iron. I refuse to buy anything anymore that needs to be ironed. Uh, and uh, she would iron, and I would recite you know, uh, prayers as I was learning them growing up, spelling words, vocabulary, multiplication tables, on and on and on, things that I might need to memorize for school, <clears throat> you know, like a little poem for a presentation or something like that. So for me, as I look back now as a mature adult, her influence is felt in every area of my life. And I can honestly say I'm really, really grateful. Now, I will also say that it has taken some time to get to the point where I'm grateful for all of it. There have always been parts I've been grateful for, but there were some parts that were eh, not so much, you know? For years, I had de ideas that aspects of it should have been different, you know? Now, between you and I, isn't that a setup for failure? I mean, whoa, that's just, that's just a setup. That pain will follow that kind of thinking. In A Course in Miracles, it says, I accept all things exactly as they are. Wow, that is so hard. That is so hard. But if you think about it, everything right now is an effect of current consciousness. And so if I want things to be different, of course, what that means in terms of consciousness is I, we, have to be different in consciousness first before we see difference out here in the world. I believe, and this is the world according to me, uh, I believe that we all chose our parents. We made an agreement, a pre-birth agreement, that, we, that these would be the perfect people, the perfect circumstances, the perfect places, to incarnate for the lessons 
that we needed individually to get in this life. And so for some of us, we can say, oh, thank you, God, I had great parents. I am so grateful I had great parents. And for others, that may be a little bit more difficult to say. Um, all the while, I think, remembering that the heart can be hurt but never harmed. Okay? This is important. And for me, it's an empowering thought to say, I chose them. I chose them for all the good that they would bring into my life, for all the great teachings and for the love and the support and the encouragement and all those good things that I would learn and receive from them. Now, it is also true that spiritual maturity demands that I recognize that I also chose them for the things they could not do, for the things they could not give me, for the things they could not be there for. It was the whole package. So in essence, they were the perfect parents for us, whatever they were. Whatever our idea is about who they were supposed to be or who they should be, what they should or shouldn't do, in essence, they were the perfect people for us. Now, to recognize this, and I, I hope you will join me on, in this, it is very, very freeing because now there is no blame. There is no regret about any of it. I'm not sure where I got this. I think it was from a meditation class I was in, but I heard somebody say this and I really liked it. And they said, I practice turning people into trees, which means appreciating them just the way they are. Kind of a fun thought, isn't it? Because, you know, you don't go out to a tree and say, God, I just wish you were so different. I wish you had more leaves. I wish you had less leaves. I wish you leaned a little this way. I wish you weren't so tall and narrow. Couldn't you be a little more? You know, I mean, we don't do that with trees. You know, I practice turning people into trees, which means appreciating them just the way they are. So where do we start? Where do we start? Always, always, and it's just a good place to check in with, is like forgiveness. And so I have this little prayer that I have used for years and years and years. And I want you to know that this prayer, over time, of its own volition, it happened that it just naturally evolved into a slightly different prayer. And it goes like this. And now, now don't, you don't have to worry about it. I'm going to have you all repeat it after me. So I used to be in this place where I had to say, I forgive my mother for all that she has done. I love her as I love myself. God's the love that I am. So, I want you to say that with me. I forgive, mother, I forgive my mother for all that she has done. For all that she has done. I love her as I love myself. God's the love that I am. And so we do this over and over and over, and I couldn't tell you how much I had done that. Because every once in a while, that idea would pop into my head that it should have been different than it was or that she did something that was not absolutely right. So why you want to say this, I believe, is that this will heal you and the prayer will evolve. And so you work with this for however long you work with this. I, am, I forgive my mother for all that she has done. I love her as I love myself. God's the love that I am. Now, over time, I found that this naturally, just naturally, evolved into I am grateful for my mother for all that she has done. I love her as I love myself. God's the love I am. So now do that one with me. I am grateful to my mother. I'm sorry, I should have set that up better. All right, I'll say it first, then you say it. I am grateful to my mother for all that she has done. I love her as I love myself. God's the love that I am. Now, it is natural to say, I can see why I chose them for the good things, you know, but why would I, why would anybody, for that matter, choose them for the difficulties? Okay, so here, is, here it is. This is it, and this is why the forgiveness becomes gratitude, because those people in those circumstances were actually the perfect conditions for you to be born into for your highest good, greatest growth and healing. See, I'm talking about what your soul, not your personality, but what your soul came in to learn, to heal, and to accomplish. And when we get that where we came in was not an accident, that that was actually a conscious choice. See, Ernest Holmes says, the soul is on a journey. The journey is back to the Father's house. And everybody makes it. 
Now, this journey is different for everybody. Wow, is this journey different. So, and I know people sometimes get so stuck on this with their parents, you know, that they are not able to get free and move forward on your life. But I want to I encourage you today, to, if you haven't, to heal this so that once it's healed, greater newness, spirit brings newness into our life in any way, anywhere where we have had healing. So Louise Hay used to say it like this. If you had trouble with your parents, she would say, you have to imagine your parents as little, little children. You know, just totally innocent, new little beings on earth when you have no accusation against them at all. Imagine your mom and your dad as these beautiful little newborn babies. You know, nobody's looking at them saying, boy, are they going to be rotten to their kids. Of course not. And we all know, we all have the understanding that nobody gets up today. You know, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, let me do some things today that are going to keep my kids in a process 60 years from now. Of course not. Nobody does that. We all understand everybody is doing the absolute best they can with the information, with the consciousness, with the resources they have at that moment. I get that. I really get that. You have become the person you are largely because of what you have experienced in life, good and maybe not so good. Right? So, and as we go along the way, sometimes we find ourselves blaming the past for the way we are today. But it came to bless us up, not to mess us up. That's the truth about it. You know, those experiences and those people came into our life to be a blessing, to add to us. Now, it may not look like they were adding to us at the time, but they were adding to our spiritual growth. Right? You have become the person you are largely because of what you have been through in life. So I don't know why some souls choose very, very difficult incarnations. We know some of these people. Some of them may be here today. That some people, it seems, have extraordinarily difficult lessons that they are going through in life. They have a very, very difficult path. Maybe those are like graduate level courses, you know? You may feel like you have multiple graduate degrees already. <laughs> no, I don't know. But the point is that we learn from all of it, all of it, all of it. If we will keep our mind open, keep our heart open. So I have a friend, and she is um, visually impaired. And she walks with a cane now. And she's very, very self-conscious about this. She was not always this way. She used to be an extraordinary athlete when she was younger. But there was an accident, and things changed. And so now she's very self-conscious, she was telling me, um, of people looking at her as a disabled person. That, you know what I mean? That, that she's very aware when, uh, when she's navigating out in public and things like that. And so she told me that the other day, she was uh, waiting uh, to go into an elevator in a big office building. And, uh, and there was a woman there behind her waiting. And she said, I could just feel her judging me. And she said, you know, and, I'm, and I was just so self-conscious about it, and I'm so aware I don't want to do the wrong thing, and yet I am visually impaired, and I do walk with a cane, and the elevator opens, and I get in. And I think, oh, I'm good. And then the woman gets in. And she says, and I'm standing looking straight ahead, and she's just staring at me. And I'm just inside. I'm just shaking, you know, but trying not to show it. And then finally we get to my floor, and the elevator opens, and we get the ding, and the woman turns just before she goes out, and she says, I've just got to say, you have the most beautiful hair of anyone I've ever met in my life. Your hair, I don't know, what do you do? Your hair is just so gorgeous. And it totally turned around. It, it, she, went, she went, oh, oh, well, well, thank you so much. She said, I didn't know what to say. She said, because I had made up this whole story that she was just judging me up one side and down the other. And, and it wasn't that way at all. She was actually admiring me. And so, so you know, it's, the point is we learn from all of it if our hearts and minds are open. She said, you know, I will not get in an elevator again thinking that people are just judging me. She said, but that was my go-to. I go to like, oh, I'm the odd man out here, so people must be judging me. See, I look at my relationship with my mother, and I can see. I, I will tell you in all honesty, I can see why my soul chose her. And the good reasons my soul, my soul chose her 
It's a very, very long list. It's a really long list. And I am so grateful and so proud of that. Like, wow, I did really good picking in that column. Yeah, I did. Now, was everything perfect? No, not perfect, but clearly perfect for me. And this is what I arrive at today. You know that she was the perfect one for me. Now, when we're young, I think you know, we expect them to be superheroes, right? Uh, and largely they are. You know, it's, 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 uh, it's hard to see when we're young that they are also human like us, that they are spiritual beings who are on a journey. You know, they have things to heal and th lessons to learn and things that must be accomplished. But I will say, yeah, I will say until my last breath that I had good parents, that they loved us, they provided for us, they taught us. And they were souls that were evolving. Souls on a journey just like all of us. You know, they did not have it all figured out before they became parents. But if I look at my own life, I don't have most things figured out before I embark on them. So I can't really blame them for that. But I believe that there, there was an agreement that before we incarnated, and the agreement might have gone something like this, if you would just imagine with me, souls that are ready to come to Earth. I need to incarnate to learn some things, to have some experiences. Hmm, let me look around. Who are the best souls for me to do this with? All right, you want to be the mom this time? I'll be the kid this time. Okay, we'll do that, yeah. Uh, I'll be the kid, and by the way, I'm going to be a handful, just so you know. <laughs> and, uh, and, and we're going to all forget this agreement. We're going to all forget this agreement. Let's play ball. Right? So the point is, we would not be who we are if we did not experience everything that we experienced. Everything, everything, everything. I wish it were so that we were totally shaped by just wonderful, loving experiences in life. Wouldn't that be great? That just sounds so appetizing to me. That's so attractive, you know, that we have a life of one wonderful experience after another, one loving moment, one loving encounter after another. But unfortunately, that does not seem to be the way it is. And if I look at it honestly, I do seem to learn an awful lot from the potholes and the road bumps. You know, those difficult experiences, they seem to really get our attention. They seem to really, really teach us something. So, all right, I'm going to quote Frederick Nietzsche, not somebody I normally do, but he did say this, and I think it's great, that you need chaos in your soul to give birth to a shining star. Hmm? I'm sorry, dancing star, shining, dancing, whatever, something. A, a very colorful star. You need chaos in your soul to give birth to a dancing star. That was it. You need chaos in your soul to give birth to a dancing star. Because it's not just the good, wonderful, loving, affirmative experiences. The other experiences are also part of the journey. And we are so grateful to anyone who's played a part in our journey. And especially today, we want to honor mothers everywhere. Thinking about this, I think, wow. Where, you know, many of us will, are fortunate enough, we'll take our mothers to a nice brunch or have them over for lunch or something like that. We'll be able to give them flowers and a beautiful card and things like that. And I think, God, in the Ukraine, mothers are not having that day. You know, so also I want to say that our hearts, our consciousness, is big enough to include mothers everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Um, why? Because love is not a gated community. That's why. <laughs> it embraces whoever it comes in contact with. So let's do that now as we turn our attention inward. So we take this moment to just be still and recognize that right here where we are, the fullness, the allness of God, God's infinite loving intelligent spirit is right here. In the place whereon we stand is holy ground. So we are surrounded and filled with God's spirit. We are on holy ground. And I know we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life. So in this awareness of our oneness with God and with each other, take just a moment in your mind's eye to see your mother. Whether she's still here with us on earth or has moved into the next dimension, see her in your mind's eye and wrap your spiritual arms around her, wishing her well and blessing good thoughts, only love, however you articulate that. And now take a moment first to forgive all that she has done and now be grateful for all that she has done, much more than you could ever even know. And now 
open your heart that much wider to include all those other people in your life who were mothering to you. Friends of your mother and teachers and neighbors and sisters and aunts and grandmas, whoever they might be, friends of the family. And just have an energy of love and blessing for all of them, for each and every one. Now we speak our word today for the world that we live in. That there is peace, that there is love, that there is healed conditions for all people everywhere, including and especially in the Ukraine today. We let our hearts and minds be wide open and bless all of it and every single one, knowing that ultimately there is a greater good that's unfolding here. We bless our church, all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And certainly I know that we are blessed by being together today, that there is a healing available for each and every one of us, and we say yes to it. We welcome it. And so with a heart that's full, I say, thank you, God. I release this word into law. I know it's done, and so it is. Together we all say, amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful for all that I have I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful I am so blessed all right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much.
Karen Mitchell. <laughs> she really is. She's a minister. You are so good. You are so good. You know, we can get her music. We can take her home. Take her home with you. You don't have to feed her or anything. KarenMitchellMusic.com. All right. If this is your first time here, we want to thank you for joining us. There's a table outside with an information packet. Tells you all about what we have going on. And if it's, this is your first time Facebooking or Zooming with us, then in the chat you're going to see all sorts of information and links to our website. So I want to invite you to follow all of that. Um, we make it really easy for you to give your donations, tithes, and love offerings to this church. And we are grateful to have them. So you can text to tithe. There's a number at the bottom of your bulletin. Or you can also use the QR code that's on the back of it. You can go to the website as well, nhcrs.org slash give. Um, prayer with a practitioner. If you've never prayed with a practitioner or you don't know what a practitioner is, let me just say that they pray with the fire from heaven in them and they will know the truth for you whether you see it for yourself or not and that's what they do prayer on steroids so if you need some spiritual support and you're in the building come forward and we will have practitioners to pray with you if you are online if you're on facebook jump over to zoom we have practitioners to pray with you we know the truth and we love you um Wednesday evening service, this Wednesday on May 11, um, I am sitting down with our practitioner Liz Racy. We're going to do that talk show format that some of you really, really enjoyed. I did a few weeks ago with uh, Jamie Lula. And so we're going to talk about how to live a life of spiritual power and magnificence as we discuss anointed and appointed. Doesn't that sound great? Um, doesn't that sound great? I'm not a control freak. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just a high-level planner. Okay, so join us. It's going to be a really fun and lively deep dive. Um, we have a grief support group, and it is meeting today on Zoom at 1 o'clock. It's facilitated by practitioner um, Carol Winokur. Next Sunday, May 15th at 1 o'clock, right here, climate reality leader Bess Fanning is going to be giving us a free presentation and program on the climate crisis, California, and its solutions. Yeah! Exactly. You look so familiar. So there's more information on the patio. I hope that you'll join us. I'll be here. Um, oh, let's see now. Japan. Who hasn't been to Japan? Who has not been to Japan? See, he has not been to Japan. Anyway, I want to invite you. Dr. Mark is taking a trip in October. It's going to be the spiritual adventure of a lifetime. We have four 
four more openings available. So please go ahead and get some information either in the foyer or on the table, also on the website. This is going to be a magnificent, magnificent trip. I hope that you will think about it. Our Love and Kindness Ministry is serving lunch to our, um, our, our brothers and sisters who are houseless or our experiencing food insecurity. We do that the third Sunday of each month. So we invite you to participate. There's a sign-up sheet out on the patio. You can sign up. We've already fixed the menu, and you can probably buy everything at the grocery store. Just cook it and bring it on Sunday by 11 o'clock, and we take it over to the, our kitchen, and then we take it to the park where we feed people. And oh my goodness, on Easter Sunday, we fed 50 people. So please sign up on the patio. You can also give money to the, we can throw money at this. I really invite you to throw money at this as well. If you're not going to cook, that's fine. Throw some money at it. Um, we have a Zoom virtual patio before and after. So he's sitting here going, oh my God, I've got to get rid of this woman. Um, be, <laughs> Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday, 7.55 to 8.15. Yes. Go to the website, please, and get all sorts of links and more information. By the way, thank you. We have the band because of you. Because of you. They are led by the erstwhile Sam Krieger, anchored by the bass, Randy Landis, giving us tempo and pulse, Sinclair Lott, flute, Karen Smith, who is just our divine energy. And I'm going home with a guitar player. I'm telling you, he's my husband. Charlie Steen. <laughs> he has a name, right? <laughs> okay. Would you stand up and sing the peace song with us? And let's, let's uh, go out to the patio and hang out, shall we? So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Okay. Here we go.